Um, one of the, the big memories for me is walking to, to the ground or walking away from the ground after the match and the grip of his hand. When I was really little, this is, you know, the really tight grip, you know, because there's so many people there and if you get lost, you know, you're in trouble really. So, uh, yeah, probably the, the grip of his hand. I think it was um, being in the stadium. I think that's what resonates in my mind. Um, and the experience of just being there as opposed to the actual game itself and what happened during the game. I think that's definitely what I remember. And the colour, the vibrancy of the, the red. And just that walk, when you walk up, uh, you know, up the stairs and suddenly you're confronted with this huge mass of people. You've never seen anything like it before and how green the grass looks. So my dad is a Dulles Hamlet fan. He started coming in uh, 1980 or 1981. And I was born in 1983. And you know, at one point, in the hospital, you know, my mum's just had a baby. My dad runs over to the ground, watches a game, comes back. Um, and I've been coming to the, to the ground since I was in a pram, essentially. He used to always tell me the results. And even though I didn't really understand it that much, I'd always sort of do a fist pump or, you know, shout, yeah, brilliant if we won. Or more often than not, we lost those days. So, you know, oh, gutted, you know, moan and groan, whatever. But didn't really know what it was all about at that stage. I, I'd sort of lost touch with football completely by then. Because I used to go, you know, back in the 1970s. So I'd had like 10, 10, 12 years not going to football at all. So, you know, I thought it was a really good thing to do to sort of create a bond. He's forging a relationship with each of us through interests or through something that he can bond with us with. And it's a way that he has one that's also his own one. Because obviously there's a relationship that we all have with him and my mum. And then my mum has things that she has with all of us. And then he has things that he has with all of us. And I'm sure there's no sort of... Um, I don't think there's anything conscious there. Uh, I think that's what you've got to do with your kids, really. Whatever, you know, Whether it's Hannah or Harry. You got to you got to have something in common with your kids that you can share, because I think that builds a relationship uh, over a period of time. You got something you got something that's jointly yours, and that you can share and develop between you and talk about. And you know, as time progresses, your kids know more about it than you. So the <laughs> didn't say that. The, the relationship changes. <laughs> because it's not you, just you as a parent saying, oh, this is right and that's right, because your kids say, no, it isn't, because that and that. And... Now, when I've kind of lost a bit of interest in Premier League football for a variety of reasons, you know, I still kind of come along to Dulwich and I'll sit in a stand with my dad and it is, I don't know, it is a bond that, that I have with him that my brother and my two sisters don't have because they could not be less interested in Dulwich Hamlet. He died in 2009, I think, about, it was in May actually, so it was a couple of weeks before the Champions League final, um, which we lost to Barcelona. Uh, and so that was difficult, I mean I was sort of in a state of shock then, so I didn't really, at, at the time I didn't really attach any conscious uh, uh, sense of emotion to the game, but some of my family members did, I remember one uncle in particular, a, he's a Manchester United fan. Uh, he was very upset after we lost. And there was some Barcelona fans in the pub that we were watching in. He was he was upset with them. <laughs> um, and then, but two years later, oddly enough, it did affect me more. I think I'd had more time to calm down <clears throat> uh, in 2011. And I watched it with some of my family members around someone's house. And sort of the same thing played out again. And there was kind of this unspoken narrative between everyone that... It would be. It would mean some weird sense of redemption, or you know, it would. It would somehow be right if we were to win, which is probably the most emotional, emotionally engaged I've ever been with a football game. It makes absolutely no sense to me, uh, and obviously, the world doesn't doesn't work like that. But there was there was a feeling that uh, if if we had won the game, it would have been it would have been somehow right, or it would have been uh, correct in in a vague memory or something. 
um, we didn't <laughs> we didn't win the game, <laughs> which is quite funny. And then I remember actually, it was probably uh, it was probably one of the very few times I cried uh, after he died at all was after that game in the garden, chain smoking, uh, and everyone, my family are quite in, well in certain certain members of my family, most of the guys are all quite uh, uh, solo rangers when it comes to uh, being emotional, so we all kind of go and do our own thing. I think someone went upstairs and cried, I went to the garden and cried, someone else did something else. Um, so, yeah, it, do, it does, Manchester United does remind me of my dad. Weirdly, Alex Ferguson reminds me of my dad loads, which doesn't make any sense because they don't, don't look anything alike. My dad wasn't Scottish. Um, they wore the same coats sometimes, but he... Alex Ferguson is kind of associated with that period of my life, and because you know football has come and go over that, he was he was a, the manager for when I was born, you know, to the point where he finished. So I think there was there was some emotional connection with him, and something I don't a link I don't really understand between the two of them as well. Um, so when he retired, it was an interesting experience because there was something else shifted, and it sort of I entered a kind of new. Uh, period of my life, if that makes sense, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with my life, really. So it's a odd, an odd thing. Uh, I d- didn't think I'd talk about this, but you know, he had a health scare a few years ago, like a bad health scare, and it's all completely fine now. Everything is okay. There's no issue there, but. I do remember thinking at one point, like, well, I won't go to football anymore. There's not, there's, I just, I could not envisage that I would go to football on a regular basis if I wasn't going with my dad. Now, now, possibly one day I will go with my son. I, I, I'm not going to force football on him. If he's interested in football, we'll go to football together. But it is something, those memories are intrinsically linked. You know, we've been to Moscow together to see United win a European Cup. Uh, I think it was pretty pretty fundamental for me because it was a bit on the scary side, probably because of the way we did it. Really, not so much the St Petersburg end of it, but you know, being dropped into Moscow, which is a very strange place, um, and it's very it's, it's very it's not very legible at all. Moscow, you've no idea where you are or how to get anywhere, and nobody speaks English, and nobody will give you eye contact or anything so you just dropped in this place this alien place and the point I the point I made you on the phone was that I, I don't think I would have been able to navigate the Moscow underground it I just be I, I just wouldn't have been able to do it at all but he could he figured it out in literally no time at all so and it's at that point where you realize your child has suddenly become the person that can do all those things and you know is is incredibly competent at you know doing stuff that you're not competent on and I think that's a sea change in any parent child relationship when you get to that point you know I don't know there's certain things like when I started doing the I started a Dalish Hamlet podcast called Forward the Hamlet um, and you know producing Dalish Hamlet t-shirts and stuff and I don't know in those sort of instances I like to think maybe there's a bit of a bit more sort of uh, paternal pride <laughs> than uh, you know than other times. It's incredible actually, and I wasn't expecting it to be qu- quite so profoundly moving. Um, obviously, I was excited about going, taking my little boy to his first match, but it was just so many little things like buying him his first United hat and scarf and sharing chips and gravy with him outside the, the ground. And me holding his hand really tight, and it just brought back all these memories of when I was a kid. And I, there were a few times when I just welled up, just overcome with emotion. And I, like I said, I hadn't really expected that to happen. And I've hardly ever been to a game. Yeah, me too. That I haven't been with my dad. I've, so hardly, I've hardly ever been as well. Isn't it? I always associate going to football with my dad. I can't imagine not going with him. I wouldn't want to go with anybody else, I think. If, I mean, he's got trouble now going regularly because from living in Milton Keynes, but I think if, if last year Harry had said, I, I won't be able to go that regularly, I'd, I wouldn't have renewed the tickets, I don't think, even with Mourinho coming. If Van Gaal had still been there, I wouldn't have renewed him anyway, but, you know. Well, I think we would, so. he probably, yeah, I think we would have done, but anyway. it wouldn't have been to watch the, the football, it would have been so we'd have the opportunity to go. Just to keep it going. To, 
to these things together, I think. But definitely if he'd said, I can't, I can't do it anymore, I, I wouldn't have renewed the tickets. But I wouldn't have said I couldn't do it anymore because I would always want to go mm. to football, but only because I was going with you, not because mm. I wanted to go and watch football. Mm. 